everybody know how this how this operates? Everybody's been here. We work together at Signature. Look at that. See, see, <laughs> that's okay. What, what, what show did we work together on? Then the last black man. Oh, okay. yeah. yeah, that was quite an after party, yeah. yeah. <laughs> that is true. That is true. That was a great show. Lots of dancing. Absolutely. Yeah. Thank you for bringing it today. Yeah, it was a good time. Good time. So have you been to watch the work before? No, this is the first time. Oh. Do you want an explanation or do you want to just dive in? Let me explain to you the first time. Oh, okay. So yeah. Is he reliable? reliable <laughs> with it? Oh, I think so. What did you say? What did you, what, how does it go? Uh, you kind of watch your work and then talk about it for 20 minutes. There you go. So you talk about what struggles people might have. Exactly. You're working your way across. Yeah, yeah. Oh, good. No, but yeah, we we'll work for 20 minutes together, and then in the time remaining, which is like 40 minutes, we talk about your work and your creative process. So not mine, but yours. Okay? Um, everybody cool? Bona. Hey. And we're for seeing you're smart. You're smart. <laughs> Yeah, well, that's, I know, that's the idea. It's better than, like, I hate you and I like you. Um, okay, so we're going to do just that. We're going to work for 20 minutes and then talk about work. I'm going to read a book today. Could somebody explain how around because I was on Oh, I'm sorry, that's right. Audrey, oh, you're supposed to, like, stand up and go. Sorry. I'm sorry. Audrey. No, no, no. I'm so sorry, I missed my, my role. Um, so if you're watching uh, online, which you can watch at howround.tv, which you already know because you're doing it. Um, so uh, if you want to write us a question, you can tweet at us at, at WatchNewYorkSLP, uh, hashtag HowlRound, which is H-O-W-L-R-O-U-N-D. Uh, you can also ask us questions on the Public Theater Instagram or uh, the Public Theater Facebook. You're welcome. And, and, and also, and also if, it, if you go to Facebook, you you take notes of what is said. Are you? Uh, no, 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 no. They're listed uh, on, 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 or is it um, other Twitter? Yeah, yeah, yeah. We yeah. tweet out little quotes of what we say. And it's wonderful. It's wonderful. Amazing. You see all the notes, and you actually see notes from other. Wow. Uh, it's very important.
anybody have any questions about their favorite Tasha? Hello, or do you have a mustache? worried about others' opinions about what I write, and I begin to second-guess things. Do you have any suggestions to work through this? Mm -hmm. She has opinions about other people's, she has worries about other people's opinions about what she's writing. And what do we do when we're worried about what other people are going to think about what we write? Um, <clears throat> it's tricky. I mean, if it's like your play that's running and people come out of it going, they run after you and hit you with sticks. I can understand. <laughs> but if it's something that stops you from writing, Melania, um, maybe just keep writing until you're done. You know, it depends where you are with the project. So if you're still working on a project and you're thinking, ah, oh, my mom or my husband or my friend or my auntie is going to really hate this, keep writing and don't show it to them, maybe, you know, until you can at least get finished and then uh, see how you feel about it then. But it's, that might be <clears throat> an actual fear that you have. It also might be just uh, some little chatter box in your head that's trying to keep you from writing. So we're not sure exactly what it is, but um, I said keep writing. Just Again, the way to keep writing is set your timer, do little 20 minute increments, and take tiny steps forward toward your goal. Thanks for calling, Mark. I missed you. I haven't heard from you in a while. I got one. Yeah. Um, Remind me of your name. Uh, Malik. Malik. Hey, Malik. Good to see you again. Um, <coughs> just a more question about, um, we all like to talk about the creative process, but I have a more kind of technical, you know, okay. question. Right. Um, I just got hired to write something for somebody, and coincidentally, the subject matter of my own material is about subject matter that I've never really, you know, tackled before, which is like the world of tech, basically. Okay. Like I, okay. I, and the the research process. What's the what's your, I guess, process in terms of like researching material? Because I know for a fact you've got some historical like you know yeah. pieces as well as you know pieces you've adapted. But sure. any any tips in terms of sure. doing sure. extensive research for something? Sure. Um, Set your idea. What I do is I set myself up some kind of deadline, okay? Because, you know, you could research and research and read every single book about the subject, whatever it is, right? Um, but if you set yourself a deadline, you say, I'm going to do, uh, say, a month's worth of research, you know, I'm going to spend week one gathering stuff, whatever, ordering books off Amazon, downloading books on your Kindle, whatever it is, uh, downloading articles, so I have everything. I'm going to spend a week doing that. And then I'm going to spend three weeks just devouring anything. And then I'm going to start writing and see where I'm at. Okay. See what I mean? So set yourself a deadline. It usually it will help you put a limit on your research. And then if you have a gap or a hole or something going, gee, I wonder how to do such and such, or whatever that, like that, you can always do specific research, research that's specific to a question that you have, the gap in the story that you need. Um, you know, a month of research is probably enough to get started, right? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. I asked a question last week online. Yeah. Uh huh. You did. Yeah. What was the question? The question was, how do you when you take something out before yeah. it's been in there for a long time, and you said to um, read it out loud. Yeah. Right. Around sure. And uh, I read it out loud, and I really thought it was shit. Uh huh. And. and it's been a while, this particular piece. Right. And, and 
it shocked me because when I had written it, I didn't think it was that. Right. But it was a beginning. Right. So, which is when, you know, and it's so funny because when we talked briefly before, right. I remember going to the bathroom and looking at myself in the mirror and I said, what do I see? Right. I said, you know, right. I said, I see me, but older. Right. You know. Uh -huh. And um, it was, it was that, it mm -hmm. was mm -hmm. part of that. Mm -hmm. So, um, is it just that I have a different observation as time has passed? Six months, so. Right, right, right. Um, it, it's pretty probable that you do. You know, you have a different point of view. You're coming from a different place, right? Um, but also, <clears throat> if you write something and then you put it away in a drawer and you let it cool off like a pie, right? And you take it out of the drawer and you read it and you think, eh, this is so good, right? It's fine. Not get specific. Why not? Why isn't it good? You know, I mean, you don't have to answer me right now, but start making a list. Start writing um, uh, on a fresh piece of paper or uh, in the margins of the actual work. What's not working? What's not working, you know? And you can go through the actual work and start going, okay, great. What's not working? You can do, I don't know if it's a novel or a play or whatever, but you can do a chapter at a time if it's a novel, right? Okay, it's a play. So a scene at a time. What's working in this scene? What's not working in this scene? How can I fix it? You know? What do I love about this scene? What do I not love about this scene? What do I have to develop? What should I cut? Okay? Get specific because eh, I don't like it or shit is a strong emotion, but it doesn't really help you. Imagine if a friend, right, you went to her play and she did you did you were you there? Yeah, I was there. What do you think? Ah, it was shit. Okay, okay, that's kind of strong. But imagine if you if it was a development and you said, it's not very good right now. Right now. Let's okay. right now. Well, there you go. Right? Because it's still a process. So you can, and she would say, why? What, what should I work on? You said, well, I don't know the main character. I didn't really understand. And then, you know, the ending, I thought was kind of arbitrary. And then, you know, I, I, I didn't get the, 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 the second character, what they were all about. I didn't understand the relationship. You'd be specific, right? Mm -hmm. So do the same thing for yourself. Get specific, okay? And that helps. It helps you get out of that maelstrom of emotion, right? This is shit. You know, just kind of so you really have to have some objectivity and then just be so emotionally attached to it. Right, you have to read it as if someone else wrote it. And hopefully that's what the time in the drawer is going to give you, right? You read it as if someone else wrote it, as if you were critiquing the work of a friend. You want them to succeed, right? Mm -hmm. And you're going to give them, you know, real, honest feedback. Mm -hmm. And you know they're still working on it. Yeah, it's like when, when you asked me the question about what we were talking about, and I said one thing, and, and it was so much more than one thing, but it's like saying uh, to myself, mm -hmm. oh, this is shit. Right. 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 It's way more than And you could also do that if something you read something it sounds really good. Oh, this is great. Why? Well, this is good. This works. I like this character. The ending seems like it really, you know, I earned it. This, you, know, you know, that kind of thing. You can do that too. You can do it the other way around. I'm not sure yet, but how do you stay on rhythm? Because I feel like I'm sticking to my tone, right. but now that I, not change, it's a one woman show, so the characters change, Right. but I feel like I could be shifting out of rhythm of, does that make sense of how it's going? Because I, you know, well, you know, I know, when I write another character, uh -huh. I'm so infused in that character that it might neglect the tone of the whole story. Mm -hmm. So I'm trying to figure out 
and I'm an overthinker, so I might be fine. Yeah. But in the rare case I'm not, how do you stick to the tone of, not the tone, I feel like I got the tone, the rhythm of the story you're trying to tell in right. different voices? Well, yeah, different. I mean, one, yeah, you a movement, and then you're a movement. It's good to know about yourself. It's good to know. Right. You're thinking, you're thinking, you're thinking about it, you know. Um, and you're looking for something that you're doing wrong. Just in case. Just in case. Right. 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 Okay. okay. So what about saying you're going to write? And different characters in different stories, whether it's a novel or play, a story play, or whatever, have different rhythms. Mm -hmm. And different internal rhythms. Even if it's a one-person show. Right. You're going to have different rhythms. Even if it's one piece, like the Goldberg variation, you might know the Goldberg variation. Okay, well, yeah, it's a piece of music. So that, those pieces of music have different rhythms and feels and all that. You may have a band or uh, instruments. You know, when a different saxophone comes, it's going to have a different rhythm than the oboe. Right. It's going to be singing. But they go. I'm just afraid that I might be like, Are you at the end? Are you at the end? Okay, well, we get to the end. Okay. Get to the end, read it aloud, right, right, right. and go, oh yeah, this is really good, or I have to change this a little bit because it's not right, 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 right. right. Okay. Yeah, to get to the end. Okay. Yeah, yeah. It's a lot of times we stop, you know, in the middle or near the end, and we ask a question like Melania asked, you know, oh no, someone might not like this, or oh no, I have the wrong, I might have the wrong rhythm, just in case I might, what do I do? Right. You know? Right. right. The answer is you keep going. Right. <laughs> yeah, you keep, you keep going. You gotta keep going. You gotta keep going, gotta keep going and then you're gonna figure out what it is you can get to the end. And then you read it over it to yourself. Or you put it in the drawer, like when the, you put it in the drawer and you take it out in a month or three weeks or whatever. You read it over and you say, oh, this works. Or this part works. This part, no, nah, not so good. This part's great. This part's amazing. This part, yeah, I don't know. Okay, you just go through it like that. You know? Question from Instagram. Ruben wants to know how do you approach rewriting? Just like we were talking. <laughs> Ruben? Ruben. Ruben, Ruben. Just like we were talking about Ruben uh, a minute ago. Um, so you, you do your you finish your draft and then you can put it away in an envelope or a folder or in a drawer or whatever you have. And then you wait uh, maybe a week. A week is a good amount of time. Take it out of the drawer, take it out of the folder, take it out of the envelope, and read it through. Read it through. I would suggest aloud. I would suggest standing up. I would suggest not in a public place. <laughs> <laughs> but if you got to read it, or if you only have a public place to work, then read it silently, you know, or under your breath. So you can feel the words in your mouth, um, and you don't have to stand up if you're in a public place like Starbucks. But then you start to do that process. We start to look and we start to see what's working. And we circle what's working and we go in the margin. That's really great. And then the stuff that's not working so great. And then we circle that and we say, yeah, we need to work on that. So that's all. You just go through to the end. And then you have your game plan for how you need to approach the rewrite. Does anybody else have any wonderful tips they have for rewriting? Um, yeah. Yeah. If I, this pertains to email and things, if I write it on my computer, and this is work day, but we write so much, I think, everybody's writing, 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 right. you know, I want it to be natural, conversational, kind of, uh -huh. I send it to myself, not always, I don't do this with everything, but I read it on my phone, and for some reason it just clicks with what I need to edit, where I need to cut, right. I think it's accustomed to reading on a phone, right. and that format just rocks, it just, and I do it, and then I might do it one, I'll just know right away, and then I'll just type in the edits with my on my computer. Yeah, it's pretty cool. I, I did have an observation when I'm I like to come here the process and like devoting this hour to this workshop and everything. And then I'm doing research as well, but it's historic fiction, and so I don't want to research too much because I I want it to stay creative. But my mind starts to dart around where I might like. I might, you know, be researching something and then I'm going to dart off and get in creative mode. My head in the clouds, right? And I start spinning it out. So I wonder, I, I no, I now have a question for you. Like, do you discipline your mind to not do that and stick with the research? Or do you let it ride and just kind of truck or kind of connect the dots? Yeah. I think it's, 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 it
think, I think it's both. I think if you're researching for a project that's historical fiction or a docu-series or, you know, something that's about tech, it's fact-based. I think you want to probably um, keep a notebook and make notes to yourself as you're writing along, reading along. Mm -hmm. Oh, that, that would make a great scene. Or I actually, you know, we can buy so many books on Kindle and you can take notes on Kindle and all that. But I actually like to buy the hard copy because I write in the book. Oh, yeah. this would make a great scene. Link with such and such, like that. So I'm just kind of constantly writing in the actual hard copy of the research material that I purchased. So it's not like a library book. Yeah. And like, then I. Um, I relate to that. Yeah, just you, cool. you do both, but you don't. Um, or like maybe a little rabbit hole, like oh, what does that name mean? What does what does that word yeah, that well, name mean? To, yeah, but you have to. Tr you have to. You're like a. I mean, if you have a kid and you you know you're walking to school with your kid and you're, or a dog. Your dog. Is, you know, come on, let's go. You know, you, yeah. you have that ability, right? Come on, junior or whatever the child name might be. <laughs> or come on, spot. You know, you, you bring spot back on the path. You have the ability to do that. So you can, can exercise that ability with your own mind. You know? You shouldn't just go whole hog, whole, this is mixing metaphors, whole hog into the rabbit hole. <laughs> but, you know, you, there should be part of yourself that stays outside the rabbit hole with the rope. Yeah, gently take or back to task. Going, come on there. Come on, let's That's go back. That's good metaphor. I can, I like think that visual. Yeah, yeah, because... Yeah, you you know, oh, I was researching this, and then you get on your computer, and then three days later, you're on Facebook. It's not a, my yeah, shit, you're losing you know. time, and it's slippery slope or something. Yeah, it's, yeah, it's not a good feeling. <laughs> yeah, earmark it. Right. So I, I like the time <laughs> capsule exactly. too. That was really helpful. Yeah, it's a week. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, a, a week, a week. Yeah, is, is good. Or if it's a big project, you know, you might need longer, but set a time, set a time limit to your research, and you can always go back and do it deeper and develop. And develop, right? Last week you said something and that I heard, and it made me think a lot about rhythm. You said your your son came to see you play, and he said, "Mommy, he's saying what you said." I love the play. You know, the play. Yeah, yeah. And and it was so interesting to me because. I was thinking about rhythms of people. I see a lot of plays where it's so fast, it's a good conversation has to be da 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 da. And I find that people who play with rhythms of, of different characters, right. different people speak with different rhythms. Yep. And yet a lot of the, the plays that I see these days are everybody's just talking, talking, talking. Mm -hmm. So when he said, He's, he's talking. He, he's saying what you say. Right. But it, how is it? How is it for him in, in the sense? But it wasn't in the same rhythm that you said. It, right. No. No. So how do you change the rhythms? I guess my question is, how do you th change the rhythms? It's kind of like music of each different character, so that mm -hmm. they do have. It. You know, one is a trombone, one is a piano. Mm -hmm. They mm -hmm. they talk in different rhythms, mm -hmm. and that's what I was thinking a lot about because mm -hmm. I don't want it to be right at that time. I mean, you can put that in the line. I mean, a character who might say, I'm using bad example, a character might say, you know, or use a lot of like wild out there words, or a lot of, a, a lot of sort of brainiac type of words. You know, different people speak in different ways. Or different people speak in different ways depending on what they're trying to get. Right? So, um, you just have to be conscious of that. You have to always remember what is the character trying to achieve by saying this word or this line. And put that in the line also. In the words of the line. Mm -hmm. In the words of the line. Mm -hmm. So, that's, uh, that's on another level of specificity. You know? on a rewrite level, so that you just want to be specific. But first draft, you might not, you might not just go for that, which is fine.
Um, okay. I hate outlines. A lot. Uh, they remind me of academia. Oh, okay. And I don't want to be. Were you a Uh, of sorts between, like, my regular academia and, um, I was a McNair scholar my senior year of undergrad, and so I did, like, okay. a long, extensive research project. Oh, uh, okay. I don't miss any of it. Yeah. <laughs> and, but at the same time, I keep losing my way with the story because I hate outlines. Right. So then I, like, re I do rereads or I start reading to do edits or redrafts, and I'm like, mm -hmm. I don't know what's going on, and I don't know what right. I've just done. Right. Is there a way to get around outlines? No. Mm -hmm. I, I don't know. I don't know. Why does it ask? 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 Why does it um, I, I mean, I don't know, I, I would be more interested in sort of looking at why, I mean, if someone said, you know, if you want to open up your own apartment, you're in your own apartment, yes, yes, yes. Um, and someone said, you want to open your own apartment, so, yeah. The way to do it, right, is you get a bank account, right, and you put some money aside every week, right, and then it accumulates. You get compound interest. You're like, ah, yeah, man, that's a great idea, but I hate banks. I hate bank accounts. I hate saving the whole concept of saving. I hate that. And then you might be wonder, okay, what's the problem? What's that about? You know what I'm saying? Um, you can't say your depression, babies, and all that because you know, maybe your great great brain was or something. I don't know. But you see what I'm saying? So I'm. Um, I know it's horrible, but right when you say it's horrible, it's pretty horrible. I would say, um, make, make the thing you don't like your friend because they can help you. And call it something else. What's another word for outline? Anybody know? Maybe. Come on. Storyboard. Storyboard. What else? Treatment. Arc. Treatment. Oh, we love these words. You like these words? You know, beat sheet. I like beat sheet because it's like... It's it sounds like, beat nick. It sounds beat nick. It's got really to it, right? Storyboard, arc, treatment, beat sheet. There's four words if you don't like outline. And you know you don't have to use Roman numerals unless you're Roman. You know? <laughs> Carol. I never outline. Okay. Uh, I, I just feel it's more, it's more important. I'll take, I'll write notes to myself. Right. I don't want this to happen here. Right. Yeah. This person comes in. I, I, I work with scraps of paper. Right. You know, and, and little notes, and I'll do that and move it around a bit. Right. I want. But I just let my characters, just let the characters do it. Yes, yeah, but you don't get lost. Uh, well, I, I use chapter, chapter headings okay. in books. What is it? A scene heading. You know, like what you want to accomplish in, okay. in that scene or in that. Right. Act. So that's like that's kind of that's kind but of that's kind of a storyboard. Yeah. You're storyboarding. Yeah. You I mean, can also put scenes on flashcards. You know. <coughs> I'm I'm not going to say throw out lines out the window or storyboard or speech sheet or treatment because if you work in Los Angeles or even in New York for people who will pay you a good sum of money to do some cool writing. They're going to ask you to use a beat sheet. And if I'm sitting here telling you not to do it, then I'm doing you a disservice. So, you hug it, give it a hug. You know that it's your friend. And realize that it has absolutely nothing to do with your trauma of blah, 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 Okay? It's not the same thing. This is your creative friend. It's a storyboard. You can use flashcards. I'm going to draw flashcards. You can draw pictures of the scenes. You can use chapter headings. But you need something to keep you on the path. If she didn't, we wouldn't suggest that she did with you. And so I'm saying, get comfortable with being a little uncomfortable. And it's because it's going to make you a better writer. And it's going to solve those problems. And you don't have a big account. Start one. I just wanted to add to what yeah, you were please. saying. Um, yeah. I don't know if it's just me, but look, lookbooks are a lot of fun to, to do. Because it's like, it, a part of it does feel like research, but at the same time, it's like you do find a lot of like images, and, and that's a little bit more creative, you know, than if you're just saying kind of like making it kind of like character goes here, character goes here. It's like you can do a whole outline, but then there's the whole process of like finding images and really presenting like a visual package. So there's something more creative about doing a workbook. Yeah. 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 Yeah
So that might that might help. I don't know. Like photographs from maybe magazines, something on the shelf, yeah. lines of text. Like this scene is about this. Is like an image of that. Yeah. yeah. That's great. Yeah, yeah. Man. One of my favorite quotes by Angela. What she said. You can't change it. Change the way you look at it. Right. And that's what that is. You've got to do the outline. Just change yeah. the way you look yeah. at it. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. I agree with you. And again, these people, and you know, how, what, what do you write? You write plays, movies, movies? Plays. Do you ever want to write a movie maybe one day, TV show? TV pilot? Maybe. I mean, you know, maybe. Maybe. you could be a lot of money to write something really cool. Anyway, thank you much for appreciating it. say, yeah, I can do that, you know what I mean? Yes. Or, or are you going to turn in a lookbook or something? You're going to turn in something. Give me an album. And we're not lying, and they're going to go, great, now we can get all on the same page, and we can know your story, and then we can discuss it, and save you hours and years of rewriting by discussing it before you commit to writing dialogue and seeing this stuff. So we're not going to shake these things. Come on, your name, man. just a part of the process for me. Like, uh, there was an interview with um, Sorkin where he's like, you know, writing sometimes people can, it can be misconstrued as me watching a lot of ESPN or something like that. <laughs> like, you know, just because there are those moments where nothing is coming out, but it's that moment where you have that eureka moment. It's just your brain thinking. You're allowing yourself time to think. It's your, you don't have to always bang out pages. It, a lot of this is really about having those meditative sort of states of, you know, Okay, it's solving a puzzle. So yeah, it's it's for me totally part of the process. Sometimes it's a you know a blessing and sometimes it's a curse, but just something that you have to you know deal with. Five minutes. Okay. What do you think, Bono? What do you think about writing blocks? Uh, I, I definitely think it happens. I like what you said about it being time to allow your brain to think. I agree with that. I have time. Have time. Oh, 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 I'm sorry. Um, sorry, if you wanted to say that. <laughs> yeah. Um, I agree with what he said about it being like your brain taking time to just think and not feel forced to like produce, mm -hmm. like writing on the page. Mm -hmm. um, I think sometimes I've completed that with procrastination, and that's why I'm like trying to stop thinking of it as writer's block and sort of allow myself to just, to just think that it is thinking or 
I'm giving myself space to like come up with the next idea or the next theme. Um, but I, yeah, I don't know. I, 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 it's, I think it's, I have real, but sometimes I'm like, is it, I don't know. Is Santa Claus real? Just don't know. <laughs> no, Santa Claus is real. Is he? I don't know. Because <laughs> writer's block is right, writer's block is fear, and Santa Claus is love, so, I don't know. Sure. Writer's block is, is, is a form of fear. He's great. Fear is real. And it's okay. And what you can call it, you can call it like, you know, Swiss cheese or some shit. It doesn't matter, you know? Um, but I think as long as you're actually making an effort, you know, if you decide to go on a, a and, you know, avoid writing, that's when it becomes procrastination. So you know the difference between those two. Yeah, I think it's real, but I think there's a lot that you can do about it. I think I've never said this before. Sometimes you just need to do something creative mm -hmm. just mm -hmm. to get into that frame of mind. Uh -huh. So if I'm, if I'm blocked writing, I paint. Mm -hmm. If I'm blocked painting, I write. You know, or just to, mm -hmm. to get into the mode of the joyfulness of creating. Mm -hmm. And then listen for mm -hmm. whatever wants to come out in whatever form. Mm -hmm. Yeah. One of the things that I tried is I did the artist way. I'm still doing the artist way. Uh -huh. So if you've never done the artist way, you have to do morning pages. So whenever I have a block, and now everyone knows I'm an overthinking girl, <laughs> I'll like do more. I'll do like three pages that I have to just write nonstop, and I say horrible things about myself in my writing. It's not intentional. The point of art, the art morning pages is you're not allowed to stop. You have to keep on writing, writing, writing. You could be like, I hate writing, this is so stupid, I hate it, I hate it. You can write the same, the thing is to get it all out. And it's funny, because like the first week, I came here like two weeks ago, and I said I was going to start my World Movie Show again. And then maybe like a weekend, I was in LA, and I had a writer's block, and I was like writing these horrible things, but the odd thing is like I flew back yesterday, and I was looking at it, and I was like, I could actually use some of this, mm -hmm. um, just in terms of my own journey. So it's, mm -hmm. I don't know, I find that morning pages, well, I'm not doing the morning pages for the show. I'm doing it when I have a block because I want to figure out what am I subconsciously telling myself. Mm -hmm. So I just figured I should have an exercise. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I, I see. Yeah, I saw a play recently, and I came away with the feeling that the playwright really hated his mother. He really hated his mother. Like, boy, does he hate his mother. You know? and, and I thought of Tennessee Williams and how Tennessee Williams had issues with his mother, but you knew that there was love there. It was, it was what they call the pair of opposites in, in um, you know, uh, Vedanta. You know, the pair of opposites. And, mm -hmm. That is really hard to write a play. I mean, that's what made Tennessee Williams so great, is to write with love, even about hate. Mm -hmm. yeah. right? I'm not making any sense. It's OK. I often don't make sense at all. But I wanted to say that. Sorry. Mm -hmm. <laughs> the writer's of my thing, I think, was, was this Carol? Yeah. 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 Yeah.
you know, so we write poorly and we make it better. And that's all we do. That's all we do. Okay.